Hey everyone, so I uh, just picked up the uh, Dash Command app for my iPad and I bought an OBD2 connector off of Amazon.com. Uh, the uh, the one that it's, it's the cheapest, it's like 40 bucks, it's the cheapest one you can find. And uh, it works fine with the Dash Command app, this was 50 bucks in Canada at least. I've downloaded a uh, an orange skin, so it kind of matches my dashboard. This is a 2008 uh, Nissan Altima 3.5 SE. Um, and I just uh, I did this because I wanted to know what's going on more in my engine, right? So here it is working. It, my iPad is in a, uh, one of those Defender cases, not the OtterBox, the one that's a little bit better. Then it, uh, it's getting hot here. Um, so all I did was basically just add a minor Velcro attachment right there. There's a Velcro attachment on my actual iPad and it just sits here. I push it in and there it is. It stays put. You get an idea what the whole dash looks like. The uh, I found the skins on the uh, on the actual dash command app. Some of them aren't as good as the actual one that comes with it, the Tuxedo Landscape, which is just the basic skin. I'll show you what that one looks like. Uh, this one, it's a lot more responsive. As you can see there, it's telling me everything. This is a, this is a great app. I, I've got all the stuff that I need to know here. Now, this is more if you have like a turbocharged engine, uh, so you can keep track of, uh, you know, your lambda, you know, how lean or rich the mixture is engine timing and stuff, but for me it's good just to make sure that everything's, uh, obviously I don't have a turbocharger in this car, um, and it's good for me to make sure everything's just working well, so my coolant's obviously 183 Fahrenheit, which is good, intake temperature, I don't have like a cold air intake or anything, so, you know, that's just a standard, you know, temperature, there's each, in each one of these, there's, there's different, uh, options, not all of them read with every car, uh, for mine, most of them read, fuel pressure, I can't read that for whatever reason, the Ultima doesn't let me. Okay, so the, uh, this is pretty cool too, this is the fuel economy system. And the reason I'm doing this is because I just couldn't find any good information on this app before I bought it. People have posted a few things on YouTube, but none of them are really that good, so I thought I'd give you guys something that you can hopefully uh, get an idea what this app is like. So there's the uh, fuel economy, average miles per gallon is 15.7, gone 130, I think the range means 134 miles left in my tank which is about right because my car says 200 kilometers left in the tank so that seems to be good 40.4 percent 40 fuel left in the tank there's my actual gauge not bad um, so it gives you your average fuel you know from 0 to 5 minutes 0 to 30 minutes 0 to 3 hours average miles per gallon um, you know I haven't taken the time to fully understand all the different ways to read this but it seems to be pretty good so far uh, what else is there Here's just, there's just a great set of stats that uh, you can, this is since last fill up, you can select on here, trip A, you can select uh, today total, you can select uh, previous day, which is pretty awesome, and there's the since last fill up, which is what I was just looking at. Um, so there we go. So my engine power max, I haven't been like, you know, driving like crazy, I've just been driving around, just doing my job. Engine power max, 193 horsepower is what it got to. I apparently hit 230 pound-feet of torque. Uh, didn't go anywhere past 5,838 RPM. So you get the idea of all the things that you can see here. It gives you your fuel flow max, which is kind of cool, so you can keep track of that to make sure you're not just dumping fuel into your engine. Um, yeah, it's it's good. It's a really good way to keep track of all of the stuff that's going on in your car while well, everything that you can read easily. Now, if we go out of this section, go to the main menu. This is like the, the actual menu, so we've got obviously all the other cool stuff in Clonometer, which is kind of cool, you know, if you're doing like an off-roading type of thing. If the app wants to actually work, there we go. So, it gives you pitch and roll. Alright. Um, it took me a while to actually get this particular connector to work with the uh, uh, 
Dash Command app, you had to set a static IP address on your iPad, which, you know, it took me about 10-15 you know, minutes to figure out. It's not that big of a deal. Skid pad's kind of cool. You uh, select that, and uh, you, know, you can see how you've been driving around. So in terms of acceleration, looks like the most I've hit is 0 0.75 Gs. More in braking, obviously, which is uh, pretty cool. Uh, racetrack is kind of cool. You can actually go to a racetrack and it will uh, figure out what the circuit is that you're doing and then it will keep track of your lap times and how many G's you're hitting in your corners so you can you know, shave seconds off whatever you want to do. Diagnostics, this is probably the most important part. So this just reads your uh, <coughs> OBD2 codes uh, in your engine. Uh, right now I am good, which is a good sign. So anything that pops up here I'm actually not sure if it, the uh, Dash Command app will tell you what the code means. It might just give you a number code and you have to look it up on the internet. But that's fine. I'm sure you can figure that out. Uh, what else do we have? Okay, so settings, vehicle manager. To get a lot of the actual uh, data for my particular Nissan, I went into the vehicle manager and I logged my own vehicle. And I filled in some stuff from a, like a stat sheet you can get online for whatever vehicle you have. So, you know, you fill in things like wheel circumference, uh, you know, fuel tank size, uh, curb weight, uh, the uh, amount, like the, the front end volume of your car so it can calculate drag and give, give you even more accurate measurements for, you know, acceleration and torque like that. All those things, pretty cool. Obviously, the one that everyone wants to know about is the dashboard, and there it is. There's tons of other cool dashboards you can get, too. Uh, I find that the other ones aren't nearly as responsive as the uh, the one that comes with it. Obviously, there's a little bit more programming that needs to go into getting all the information to read out very quickly. So you just you can just download. You go to download dashboards, and then you just you can browse and look at pictures of them. It's pretty neat. Okay, so there's that one. It's kind of cool. The idea. See, it's not nearly as responsive. That was like two or three seconds after. So what I'll do is I'm just going to try and drive around with my with the normal dashboard and uh, see if you guys can get an idea what it looks like. It might be a bit shaky. I'll do my best to hold it steady. smooth road. So it's pretty neat. You can see it, it responds fairly quickly, which is really kind of cool. It just kind of feels like you're, uh, you know, in a big supercar or something, even though you don't have a supercar, which is cool. Not everyone can afford to have, you know, all this information installed coming with the car. Okay, well, that's uh, that's it. This video is, you know, way too long. So, you know, I might put in the in the description where you can take a look for the different parts of the video, which is going to be irrelevant me telling you that now because it's at the end of the video. So, see y'all later.